We've been having a great moment here in the presence of Jesus. All the way since yesterday, but one. The Lord servant has been ministering powerfully. Oh yes, yes, it has been awesome. Our lives are changed. We have not only been challenged here and there. We've been changed a mighty way. And remember, he's here. Very few days now remaining. You'd rather maximize the few days that are remaining and the moment we have. How many people are ready for God's servant right now? Hallelujah. Without further ado, Bila muda, my joy and honor to welcome God's servant, even Apostle Richard Mayanja. Richard Mayanja. Give the Lord a mighty hand of prayer. Let's lift up our hands and pray. Precious Lord, we thank you for this afternoon, for the ministration of your word. We pray that your spirit and your word will have freedom and liberty in our lives. Rule and super rule on this mountain. Minister powerfully to every man and every woman, every boy and every girl, Everyone according to the understanding capacity you've given them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated, please. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor you look good. But I look better than you. to God I want us to turn to the book of Proverbs chapter number 3 chapter 3 I'm picking a subject the 10 people you cannot help are you happy to hear that somebody said the 10 people you cannot help Awesome. Chapter 3 Verse 27 Verse 27 says Withhold not good Let's read it together Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in thine power or in the power of thine hand to do it. Let's read it again. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. In other words, the catchphrase here is withhold not good from them to whom it is due. He did not say that with the hard not good to them who don't qualify. You only with the hard not good to whom it is due. In other words, I can with the hard good to whom it is non due. Amen. It can be in my power to do it, but if it is non if you, are, you don't qualify for it, I'll fold my fingers. Amen. 
you are not called to help everybody. Tell your neighbor you are not Holy Ghost Junior. There are people we are supposed to help and it is important that people qualify. Somebody say qualify. Amen. You allow me to drink something. I will allow you next year. Hallelujah. We are going to discover today that you need to help people who have qualified to be helped. Amen. If this person doesn't qualify for help, please do not help them. Number one, you cannot help anyone who refuses to disconnect from wrong people. You cannot help anyone who refuses to disconnect from wrong people. Every man is going to be a product of his environment. If the environment has not changed, it doesn't matter the amount of help you are going to pass on to that person. You cannot help them. Bible says in Proverbs 13 verse 20 He who walks with wise men shall become wise but a companion of fools shall suffer harm or shall be destroyed. It is important to know that until you change someone's friend it is impossible for you to help them. Because people don't rise above their company. People don't rise above the company they keep. The company you keep determines your choices that you make. And the choices that you make determine your character. And consequently, character will determine your destiny. So if I'm not able to influence your friends, then I'm not able to influence you. You cannot help anyone who refuses to disconnect from wrong friends or from wrong people. Number two. Are you writing? You cannot help anyone or anybody who wants what you have but doesn't want your advice. You cannot help anyone who wants what you have but doesn't want your advice. Any person who doesn't want your counsel, you can help them. If somebody wants what is in your wallet, he wants what is in your hand, but he doesn't want what is in your heart, don't help them. And you will still make it to heaven. Without helping them. Amen. If they want what is in your hand. And they don't want what is in your heart. Please. Because when I begin to talk to you from my heart. It means that probably I know the reason why you are in that predicament. And I'm passing on cancer to you. To help you never. Never to fall into that pitfall again. So he, he, I'm trying to pass on relevant information to you. But you say, please, I came for money. If you, don't, if you cannot help me, then let me go somewhere else. I'll just tell you, please, you want to go? Are you slow? Do you want me to push you? I can even help push. If you want my money and you don't want my counsel and you are in my house and when I'm trying to give you my counsel, you tell me you don't need my counsel, you need my money. I will open every door in my house and ask you which one do you want to use. All doors are open for you. 
Where do you want to go through? Any person who wants what you have and he doesn't want your advice doesn't qualify to be helped. Never withhold good from whom it is due. This scripture simply teaches that people need to qualify for help. It is important for us to know that God has not called us to be moved by sympathy but by compassion. God is not moved by the need. He, had, he would have put his headquarter in Somalia. Are you listening to me? Because Somalia ceased to be a nation. It is now trying to come back. In the quarter of God, if it was about needs, he would have put his the quarter in Mogadishu. Don't help anyone who wants your money, but he doesn't want your word. Because for the fact that you are coming to me and believing that I can help you, it means I know what you don't know. So it is important then for you to listen to me so that you don't fall into the same problem again. Awesome. Tell your neighbor I love Apostle Mayanji. I didn't hear you. Good. Clap for me now. I'm happy. Number three. You cannot help anyone who believes or who thinks you are the source of their problem. Any person who thinks you are the problem, you are the reason why they are suffering, you can't help them. Even if you would have loved to. Because they have closed their spirit. They have closed their heart. You cannot penetrate. You cannot help anyone who believes that you are the source of their problem. You are the reason why I'm going through this. Do you know that some people believe like that? I wouldn't be like this if it were for you. If we were not for you. Now if I'm the source of your problem, then don't come to me. Don't help anyone who believes that you are a source of their problem. In church circles, we do things that I feel grieve the Holy Spirit or yeah, they grieve the Holy Ghost. You can't help anyone God has not helped. Hello. That man is talking to you. Tell your neighbor that man is talking to you right now. Anybody who believes is suffering because of you, it's impossible to help him. Number four. Go to Psalm 119 quickly. Psalm 119. Somebody sin number four. You cannot help anyone who has not tested the pain of being wrong. You cannot help anyone who has not tested the pain of being wrong. It is not easy to help someone who has never tasted pain. 
a person who cannot sit and look back at the mistakes he made along the way that is called a testing the pain of being wrong looking back and you say I wouldn't be where I am today if I did not make that mistake reflecting on the past You need to be a student of history if you will ever make any headways in life. You need to look back and see. I'm coming back to you in the evening with a message. The man you could have been. Tell your neighbor, be here in the evening. The man Somebody said the man you could have been. You need to reflect. You need to learn to look back. You need to become your own judge. And say. I think I was wrong. I was wrong. It is impossible. To help anybody who has not tasted the pain of being wrong. Because you need to remember. There are some things we don't learn on the dining table. We learn them through pain. I'm going to show you a scripture here that will make your needs. Have fellowship with one another. Fellowship. I wouldn't be this kind of minister. If I had not tested pain. Look at your neighbor and tell them that pain produces power. Good. If God has not squeezed the sausages out of you properly. He can't use you. God never uses a man he has not broken. Have I ever told you here about the breaking process of God? I think so. He breaks you, then he distributes you. You cannot be marketable by God. The supernatural will never market you until they have broken you properly. Properly. You ask Jacob if you are joking. As Jacob he used to steal blessings. Verse 67. Jacob used to steal blessings until one day he met a man. And this time the man was not just a man, he was God. And this time God was not just coming to bless, he had also come to wrestle. Until God wrestles with you, he cannot distribute you. You see us staying in the rooms everywhere we go. You are in the, this is not how we were born. We are broken vessels, sir. God has to change you. Look at, tell your neighbor that there are things you are supposed to learn through pain. Here is David speaking. Read together with me verse 67. Before I was afflicted. I went astray, but now I have kept thy word. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. I've learned as a seasoned minister that it is not easy to help people who have not tested pain. That tells you the reason why 95 up to, let's say probably 98% of the people who inherit the wealth of their fathers cannot maintain that wealth because they don't know the pain that it took for that wealth to be made. It is impossible to help anyone who has not tasted pain. When you are training your children, teach them 
that these things don't just come because one day you will not be with them children come to go one day you are not going to be with your children you will grow very old and go home to be with the Lord not every time your child comes to you asking for money that you dig in your wallet and take out money not every time I have asked God for money he gave it to me because he's a good father Mm. read verse 6 to 7 loud before I was afflicted I went astray but now I have kept thy word continue thou art good and doest good teach me thy statutes 69 the proud have forged a lie against me but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart 70 their heart is as far as glees, but I delight in thy law. 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The statutes, he did not learn them from the dining table. He never learned them in a palace. He learned them through affliction. You wonder why King Saul is sat on the throne for a short time. And King David has sat on the throne forever. The Bible says so. The difference between these two kings of Israel is affliction. Here is Saul when he's looking for his father's donkeys, he has pocket money. He has money. David is a beggar and is anointed. He's asking people, please give us some water. One day things will change. One day things will change. Don't mock a man when he's going through affliction. Because a day will come. When you'll be asking for bread from the house of that man. Joseph, because of the greatness where God had to take him. He had to pass him through the fiery furnace. The fire that purifies. It is easy to become proud. If you have never tasted affliction. If you have never tasted affliction, you tend to become judgmental and critical. You have reasons why so and so is suffering. You have answers to everything people are going through. You have answers ready. But if you have gone through, Ezekiel said, I did not understand them until the day I sat where they sat. He did not understand why they are suffering until the day he sat where they sat. So what you are going through today is a preparation for greater glory. But the point is, it is not possible to help anyone who has not tasted pain. Hallelujah. Number six. I am number six. Five. Oh boy. Five. Sorry. Five. You can never help anyone who dishonors proven achievements. That's very important. You cannot help anyone who doesn't honor those who have achieved something with their lives. If you dishonor proven achievers, 
you can never receive help when you see a rich man you have reasons why he's rich he's a thief he's this you can never help anyone who dishonors proven achievers you see apostle mayanja you say he must be a drug trafficker you cannot help anyone who dishonors proven achievers because every man must be a product of a reference Every man must point to another man that he made me. I learned it from him. When I saw him, he helped me. Anybody who is criticizing achievers should never be your friend. Because if you want to stay at the level where you are today, be critical of proven achievers. I suggest then, that when someone is better than you, look for their secret instead of criticizing them. Whatever you criticize will walk away from you. Whatever you celebrate will walk toward you. How can you be healed when you are criticizing Benny Hinn? How can you be wise when you are criticizing Apostle Mayanja? A brain powerhouse of a man. A generator of wisdom. Ah, yeah. I tell you, a principality. <laughs> How can you? Because whatever you criticize, will never walk toward you. Impossible. How can you become rich in this kingdom when you're criticizing men who have so much money like Kenneth Copeland? Whatever you criticize walks away from you. What you celebrate will walk toward you. You get it? So anyone who criticizes and dishonors proven achievers you cannot help them and it's amazing in church in churches where you find such people people who are not born again they tend to celebrate those who are better than them church people have reasons as to why this is happening for you shut up Celebrate proven achievers. It is a powerful law. It is a powerful law. Every time you celebrate those who are above you, you happen to become like them. There is a way you are attracted to their grace. They begin to flow in your system. Even when you have never shaken their hand, as long as you are celebrating them there is a way they are duplicated into you their grace becomes your grace their honor becomes your honor so you cannot celebrate something and you don't attract it but if you don't celebrate proven achievers you will never be an achiever because that is the seed you are sowing. Number five. Number six. You are good students. Clap for yourselves. I love what you are doing. You are sober. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor. I can see you are very sober. 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 These now are going to be ten commandments in your house. Write them somewhere in bold letters. Whoever is coming to you for help in your house, he will, the first thing you will read, ten people. You cannot help. <laughs> so before they speak anything, let them read that first. Get yourself a good artist. Go to the computer. Put it down. More letters. 
capital letters. And you will still make it to heaven. Actually, you make it faster when you put it in your house. <laughs> Ten people. Oh. Tell your neighbor, I feel excited. Number six, you cannot help anyone who doesn't believe in your credibility. Those who don't believe in your potential and in your ability to change their destinies positively, it is impossible to help them. You cannot help anyone who doesn't believe in your credibility. That's why you find Jesus asking questions like, do you believe I can do this? Eh? Why is he asking that? He's simply asking, do you believe in my credibility? Do you believe I can do this? You believe I can do this? Anyone who doesn't believe in your potential, don't. I suggest after this message stop forcing yourself on people if people don't believe you can do it you can do it for them let them go tell your neighbor you need to possess the gift of goodbye let them go those who believe in your credibility will come Anyone who doesn't believe I'm a man of God, I will never force myself onto them. There is another one who still believes that I'm very, very anointed more than the anointing boy. Those are the ones who come my way. You see, when God created you, he also created your people. Not everyone who is with you is for you. God created your people. In your life, there are specific people you are supposed to touch. So don't struggle pushing yourself on people's lives. Anybody who doesn't celebrate your credibility, please, goodbye. See you in heaven. We meet where? In heaven. Eastern Gate. Great. People don't know that they will get into trouble every time they criticize credible people. There are people who know what I don't know. I celebrate them. You can never increase on your knowledge if you, are, if you don't celebrate those who are better than you. Because there is no man you'll find on earth who is a finished product. Tell your neighbor you are still being processed. You are not yet finished. You are not a finished product. Number word. Seven. You can never help someone who is not a tither. Every time you don't tie, things become tight. A non that don't help them. Why? Even God doesn't help them. You can't. Ralph Mahoney stands out to be one of the greatest men of God in our generation. He's an American man, uh, man of God. He's... Uh, is a sensitive minister of the gospel. Dr. Ralph Mahoney was approached by this businessman for prayer. He said, sir, I need your prayers. And he said, for what? He said, because my business is collapsing. He said, how can your business be collapsing? It shouldn't be collapsing. He should move from glory to glory. So he said, I'm not going to pray for you. 
said why but you're a man of god you are supposed to pray for us he said yes but i'm not going to pray for you in particular but if you're forcing me to pray for you i'm not going to pray in english i'm going to pray in tongues and he said you come back he said let me lay hands on you and pray in tongues suddenly he switched to new tongues of angels and the Bible says that when you pray in tongues, you can ask for the interpretation. And the Spirit can give you the interpretation. And this man said, why are you praying in tongues for me? Is because I don't know what is wrong with your business. But the Spirit searches the mind of God. So when I speak in tongues, the Holy Spirit will get straight to the mind of God. And he will speak to God in, according to his perfect will concerning your business. So he prayed in tongues. And he said, Lord, can you give me the interpretation of what I've prayed for this man? What, what the Spirit, what the Holy Spirit has prayed for this man. Listen to what the Holy Spirit prayed. He knew the mind of God. He said, Lord, this is now the Holy Spirit praying. Even what is remaining destroyed. The one that is remaining. Finish it. I said now from today I will pray for people in tongues. Because some of you. We are praying for you to break through. And the Holy Ghost is praying break down. And the Holy Spirit gave the Father because the Bible says it searches the mind of the Father. So he gave the Father the reason why whatever is remaining must suffer destruction. He said this man when he was very poor in prayer. When he was very poor he vowed that when you bless him he will be faithful in tithe and offering. He has never paid tithe. A single day. Whatever is remaining. Finish it today. You can never help a non-tither. So if your business is collapsing. We want to look at the books. The books must be opened. <laughs> the Bible says when you don't tithe your heaven is closed so there is no prayer there is no prayer that can open the heavens of a non-tither it is when you tithe or after you tithe that the Bible says God will open the windows of heaven if you don't close business pockets with holes I again I suggest never be a close friend of a non-tither. Eh? He will contaminate the presence of God. A non-tither is venomous. It's venomous. Ask your neighbor, are you venomous? <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. I have a return ticket. It's good to host rich people like me. Wow. A non tither is venomous. If you employ a non tither in your business to work for you, it will collapse. Heaven is closed for that person. Qualifications. In your business, get yourself a place. Ten people can help. Promise me you will do that. Amen. Don't help somebody who doesn't tie. Number no six. You want to keep me here? Away. you can never help anyone who refuses the biblical solution to their problem 
you cannot help anyone who refuses the biblical solution to their problem again I say you cannot help anyone who refuses the biblical solution to their problem every time you say the Bible says ah again you are I don't want to hear that. Okay, get out of here. Whenever you use the Bible to solve someone's problem and he rejects that, stop. Push him out of your place. Tell him you are bad conduct of the presence of God. Get out of here. Somebody say bad conduct of the presence of God. Get out! This Bible we have has every solution to every problem. The Bible is the answer. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word became God Himself. So every time I use the scripture, it means I'm imparting God in your spirit. So if you don't want to hear what the Bible says concerning your issue, then you don't deserve to be helped. You can't help anyone who refuses the biblical solution to their problem. Number nine, you can't help a lazy person. You cannot help a lazy man. Tell your neighbor that lazy boys become lazy men. Don't help lazy boys. Lazy boys are not even supposed to marry. For the sole reason that women don't eat Bible. How many love me here? Clap for me. And you get excited now. Tell your neighbor that women don't eat lamentations. Don't help a lazy man. When people come to you for money at home, if you have something to do there, let them work. Because the Bible says if you don't work, don't eat. Tell your neighbor, stop eating illegally. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. My goodness. Stop eating illegally. Proverbs 14 23. Write it down. It says, In all labor. There is profit. In other words, don't say this job is not good. But the Bible said, in all labor, there is profit. It is good to position yourself somewhere so that the good job that you are looking for will find you on that station. In all labor, there is profit. But the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. One of my sons was working at, as a doorman at a hotel in Dubai. Spiritual sense. Opening doors for the guests who come in. Greet them, put on a smile. A big hotel. One day, as he kept on greeting people, and he was a graduate, he's Kenyan. graduate tell your neighbor that don't allow papers to paralyze your destiny <laughs> and I'm a graduate I can't do this job who are you poverty makes a mocker of the certificates if you are poor Nobody remembers your degree. 
but in all labor there is profit one day he was opening the door for a man and when a man came he said hi hi they became acquaintances so one day they happened to talk and he said you see the kind of business you are doing it can be done in east africa he said you mean he said yes and then he told him you know i'm a graduate i like such people i like such people the other day a guy was serving me how do you call this hotel in Nembo? Hmm? Huh? Embo. The one on the road. Isaac. Isaac what? Walton. Yes, I wanted two names. He was serving me. So as he's serving me, we became friends. And I was giving him tips. And he said, but side, you know, I'm a graduate. That's good. And he took and he has a degree. God wants you to God would want to bless you, but he has to find you somewhere. You, not in your house. Not in your house. Get out of your house. Take the degree out of the house. Yeah? So this my son, he met this man, and the man said, You are intelligent, young man. You are going to be my manager in that region. He flew back to Nairobi. He has now become a big man. He's on TV now. He has even written a book. He got knowledge from these people. He began to fly. He used to call me every time. He said, now I post I'm in Cyprus. Now I'm in Germany. Now I'm here. Now I'm this way. It started when he stood at the door opening. You never know who you will be opening for. You need to learn to position yourself. Tell your neighbor, swallow your pride. Position yourself somewhere. In all labor, there is profit. In all labor, there is profit. Now he has his own house in a posh area. He's married a beautiful lady. I mean, things are working for him, my friend. My friend. Hi. Write these scriptures. Let them get into your last stomach when you go home. Proverbs 12. Verse 24. It says the, land, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule. But the slothful shall be under tribute. I love that. Proverbs 12 verse 27 right there. The slothful that the, is not but still is not comfortable of the person who is coming. This Bible we have has every solution to every problem. The Bible is the answer. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word became God himself. So every time I use the scripture, it means I'm imparting God in your spirit. So if you don't want to hear what the Bible says concerning your issue, then you don't deserve to be helped. You can't help anyone who refuses the biblical solution to their problem. Number nine, you can't help a lazy person. 